everyone, it's me, Alex, and everyone's favorite bird, Archie. <laughs> Today's video is something a little bit different on my channel, but it is something that is so highly requested because I have quite an unusual living situation. I live with my ex-boyfriend Sam and my fiancé Dan. What I'm going to do is get the little story over and done with because so many people have asked the same questions. So I'll just give a quick summary, like a timeline of events, and then we can jump into some questions that people have left for us. So in 2007, I met Sam when I was in school. It was uh, grade 8 and we bonded over our love of Harry Potter. Now, Sam and I were best friends from year 8, 9, 10, and 11, and then when we were in grade 12, he asked me to be his girlfriend. Now, at the time, I didn't have, you know, those sort of feels for him, because he was my best friend, but when he asked me out, I was like, you know what, yeah, sure, he's my best friend. Who doesn't want to date their best friend? I mean, later in the story, you'll find out why that may not be such a good idea. But at the time, I was like, you know what, sure. We hang out every single day. We're always going to the movies, always getting coffee. We're always talking on the phone. We're basically boyfriend and girlfriend anyway. So we dated from 2011, 12 and 13. And in 2013, I knew that the relationship was coming to a close. I had thought in the back of my mind for a while that Sam and I were better off as friends. And it just took me quite some time to make that sort of leap to break up with him. Because you know how there's this societal idea that you can't be friends with your ex. And he had been my best friend for so many years and I was so scared that if I broke up with him, we would never talk again. And he was the most important person in my life. We had shared so many experiences together for such a long time. And I was truly so, so scared to break up with him. I thought. If I break up with him, he's going to be so hurt, he's going to be so upset, he'll never talk to me again. I'll lose not only my boyfriend, but I'll also lose my best friend. It did take a while, but eventually I, I knew in my heart that it wasn't fair. If I was having hesitations about the relationship, it wasn't fair for me to continue it. It wasn't fair on him, it wasn't fair on me. There's a, a bit of a funny story to the actual breakup, and we'll get into that later. But we broke up in 2013. Now let's, let's backtrack for a bit. <laughs> When I was in school, I was studying Japanese. My school didn't offer Japanese, so I had to study through an open high school, which is basically a place where kids from lots of different schools can come to study languages. So I was there studying Japanese, and I met a girl called Tash. From the day that we met at this open high school studying Japanese, we bonded over our love of Japan, the fact that we had both visited multiple times, we could speak Japanese, we could practice together. We became great friends. And in 2000 and 12, I think it was, she invited me to go to Japan with her. She said, I'm going to Japan in a couple of months with a big group of friends. You should totally come. And I was going through this spontaneous period in my life where I was like, you know what? Yeah, why not? Why not travel with a group of people I've never met before? That doesn't sound awkward at all. Not wanting to go completely alone with no one that I knew, I did ask Sam because at the time Sam and I were dating. So I said to him, do you want to come to Japan with me and a friend of mine that you don't know, and all of her friends. And Sam and I, we were like, yeah, you know what? Sure, why not? Let's do it. So Sam and I went to Japan, and when we were in Japan, we met Dan. Now, we met on the slopes of uh, a ski resort in Niseko, which is on the top island of uh, Hokkaido. We were in Japan, I think, for almost a month together, so we had a lot of time to become friends. And Sam and Dan, they really hit it off. They, they became great mates in a short period of time. While we were there skiing, it was funny because Dan and Sam, they got on so well and they were so good at skiing and I was useless at skiing. And they ended up skiing together, hanging out all the time. So they became friends. Now in 2013, that's when I broke up with Sam. And in 2014, that's when Dan and I got together. Now we had all remained friends after our trip to Japan. It really brought us all close, it brought us all together. And we used to hang out with that girl Tash and all of her friends all the time. And obviously Dan was there, Sam and I used to go along and hang out. And then when Sam and I broke up, and we remained friends, which I'll go into a bit more later, we continued to hang out with them. I was pretty interested in Dan. You know, Dan was this tall, handsome, red-headed guy 
studying engineering. He was interested in Game of Thrones, he loved Japan, he liked Japanese food, he liked heavy metal music, which is the only music I listened to. There was a lot of things about Dan that I was really, really interested in and I wanted to get to know him a bit, a bit better. Sam, being my best friend, still, was a pretty good wingman. So on the 31st of August in 2014, we were at a house party with Dan and all of his friends and Sam dropped a couple of hints to Dan and Dan had been interested in me and that night, I like to think it's because of Sam that Dan asked me out. So Dan asked me to be his girlfriend in 2014. We have been together since then. He asked me to be his wife in, what was it? May 8th, 2018. So we'd been together four years, uh, or almost four years, just coming up to four years. In terms of how we ended up living together, that's an interesting story. So in 2016, I just got a job in the, the city at a big media company and I was commuting for like an hour to get to work and it was taking so long and I knew I had to live closer to the city. We had a look around at apartments and places are kind of expensive in Australia, particularly in Sydney where we live. It's really very expensive to rent. One bedroom apartments were kind of small and we were also looking at two bedroom apartments, but we could not afford two bedroom apartments. But anyway, we, we were looking, Dan and I, we knew we wanted to move out. At the time, Sam was with someone. Sam had a girlfriend. He'd actually had two girlfriends by this point. One of them, who they'd broken up, they're still friends as well. We're all friends, we hang out, nothing awkward there. But the other girlfriend, when they broke up, it wasn't such a smooth breakup, so Sam needed somewhere to live. We were still living at home at the time. Dan was living with my family. When Sam ended up in, uh, you know, the situation with the breakup and he needed somewhere to go. My parents love Sam. They've known him for, what, it's been a decade. So they said, look, Sam can come live with us. So Sam came to my parents' house and we were there for a couple of nights while we were trying to figure out where's Sam gonna go. And then we said, you know what? I mean, Dan and I are gonna move out. We can't really afford a two bedroom place, but if you wanna move in with us, we could totally afford it. We mulled it over, Dan sort of did up a little bit of a spreadsheet with a budget and put it forward to Sam and said, look Sam, if you save this much money a week and you do this and that and that, you can afford to move out. Dan was really, really eager for Sam to live with us because Dan and Sam are great mates. They have a lot of common interests. They do a lot of things together. They play D&D together. They go to the gym together. They do all sorts of stuff. They do woodwork together, things like that. So Dan was like, yeah, Sam, you should live with us. Now a lot of people, they always say in the comments, they're like, how can Dan possibly stand seeing you and Sam living together? Well, it's, it's funny because it was Dan's idea. So, you know, there's that. We applied for a place, the place that we're in right now, we applied for it. So we moved in with Sam in, I think it was like April, 2016, and we've all been living together ever since. Things are pretty smooth. Uh, the boys kind of spend more time together than they spend with me. That's the brief summary. So with that, I will bring the boys in and we can ask them some questions. Okay, so for anyone that's confused, this is Dan, <coughs> this is Sam, this is the fiance, this is the ex. So anyway, we have- Your Dan? I think I'm so. I'm Sam. I guess the first question we have, how is Dan able to be friends with Sam? Isn't he bothered that you dated him? We have so many things in common. You've just fallen for my wily charms. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't he bothered that you dated him? Um, no, not really. Like, I asked Sam if I could date you. There you go. Yeah. That's true. At that house well, party. If, like... I, if I recall correctly, you came to me and I was like, yeah, of course. And I think afterwards you kind of fessed up like, I mean, it didn't matter what you said. I was like, <laughs> <Yeah. gonna date laughs> <you." laughs> Yeah, I guess so. But at, least, at least you're decent, at least you asked me. Oh, yeah. I asked you, I was like, kind of like... You created the illusion that you were like, asking. I was like, I was polite, I was pulled him aside, I was like, is that okay? I think Do you things mind? are progressing. And, and I was then... like, yeah, of course, man, like, no worries. Is it ever tense or awkward to live with your ex and fiancé? Like, is jealousy ever a factor? I'm not jealous of Alex. <laughs> it's, it's... Well, let me put it this I'm, way. I'm jealous when this happens. Like, come to me, mate. I guess I'm jealous of uh, the amount of time they spend together playing Xbox. Would you like to come to the gym with us? Nope, never. What do you all do for work? Oh, I'm on. Let's start. Let's and scroll through. Let's do the impressive jobs first, then I can finish up with what I do. Dan is a civil engineer. <laughs> I work for a construction company. I work in. It's kind of like. A mix between marketing and advertising, and I also run a wedding photography business, and I also have... <laughs> it's, it's... there's a lot going on with me. YouTube. 
I do YouTube. Oh, yeah, YouTube. This, this, this thing. This I make money from YouTube. The obvious one. I do a lot. And Sam. I. So I got a degree in science, and I thought, yeah, let's get a job in science. So I work at a pathology company, but I answer phones all day. That's so it's it's a glorified call center for a pathology company. That's that's basically what I do. Ent I talk to entry doctors. Entry level jobs, people. Entry yeah. level jobs in science. In I talk Australia. to doctors. That's fun. But basically, <laughs> it goes, "Hello, what can I do for you? I need these results." Yes. That's what we do. That's that's, that's, that's what my that, job. that's where that degree got you. Yeah. How blind is Sam? Like, is he nearsighted or farsighted? I'm incredibly uh. nearsighted. Um. If I take my glasses off... How many off, birds am I holding up? No, no, Sam, Sam. It doesn't work that way! Why does everyone think it works that way? My hand is blurry. Now it's in focus. I, that's, that's how close I have to get. Do you hate each other? You probably don't, but what's the least favourite thing that one of you does that the other hates? Can I go first? I, I mean, yes. Yeah, what do you hate? Sam's croaky voice. What? <laughs> Sam does... He does the voice. Uh, it's like, it's like uh, a uh, groan of night. He does his croaky or... voice. Uh, it's confident in the voice. Yeah. So Alex. I hate it. <laughs> what a sh- What a sh- Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> and also Sam chews really loudly too and I hate No, no, no. He... I chew normally. No. <laughs> you just have a problem. No. You have a problem. Dan, do you have a problem with my chewing? I will go into the other room if you sit right next to me and eat. He chews loud. And then you like kind of look at me and I was like, why'd you get up? I was like... Because you're chewing loud? I like carrots. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> oh, I better say something my least favourite thing about Dan. He talks really quietly sometimes and I can't hear him because I have bad hearing. Because I drove around... I feel like that's <laughs> more of a you problem. <laughs> when, I, when I first got my licence I drove around listening to heavy metal music at full volume and I ruined my hearing and sometimes I can't hear him talk. And I'm like, speak up! And he doesn't want to. Because <laughs> it feels like I'm being aggressive. Such yep. a gentle it's song. like I'm yelling at you and you're like, oh! What was that? What? Okay, what's your least favourite thing about us? Alex is the messiest person I've ever I'm met. I'm not. She is. I'm not. She is. Just a little bit. Okay, what about Sam? Let's go with Archie. You poo everywhere. Archie, what's your least favourite thing about us? Actually, probably the screaming, but that just comes with having a bird. Um, least favourite thing about Sam. I make you coffees, remember that. <laughs> I make you coffees too. He's trying to gain weight, but he won't eat. Yes! That drives me Sam insane. Sam doesn't eat enough, it's so annoying. It's like, oh, I'm not gaining weight. It's like, f***ing eat. I'm not hungry. Okay, what's your least favourite thing about us two? Well, I mean, look, Dan has basically covered it. I mean, I'm Al Al Alex. I'm not, I'm not. I'm not messy, I swear. A grot. Yes. <laughs> I'm just gonna spin the camera. No, 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 oh, no, no. Yeah. Um, Dan, I... I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Alex. I... There's, there's not really anything I'm sorry. I mean, yeah, lots of things wrong. Lots of things wrong. Uh, what? My lunchboxes. Doesn't, Doesn't wash his oh, lunch container. <laughs> no, the other day I went to get a um, Tupperware container out of the cupboard, and I know we've got like 10 of the damn things. I'm like, wh where are they all? Where are they? I checked the dishwasher, I checked the cupboard, I checked the sink, they were nowhere in sight, and, I, and it dawned on me. They all must be in either Dan's ute, or his desk drawer at work. Actually, I got in trouble at work the other day. I'll bet you did. <laughs> and you think I'm messy, and you hoard moldy lunch containers. No, no. Moving on! They were all clean. They just were there, and everyone's like, why are there clean containers in the fridge? God damn it, Dan. God damn it. <laughs> Would you consider Sam to be your brother? 110%. Sam and I are both only children. He's... <laughs> we could be. <laughs> Absolutely. Sam is like my brother. He has been for 10 years and nothing's gonna change that. So when are you and Dan getting married? We're getting married in... on the 31st of August next year. Yeah. Rude. That was a clearly a question for us. Thank you. The tea. What's the tea? Was Dan jealous of Sam at first and how did he handle it or did he already know? At first, I think you were. Well, you definitely already knew. Yeah, he already I think knew. You met us when we were together, <laughs> so yeah. you knew about that. I, I do kind of remember you saying that I talk about Sam too much. Like right, like four years ago, I remember you making some comment like, "Alex, you talk about Sam too much. Like it's weird." And I was like, "But Dan, Sam and I have been friends for. He's been my best friend for ten years." No, it was it was like every time we tell a story of the past, it would 
involves, involves sex. Involves yeah. But yeah. like it's just a byproduct of actually being best friends for yeah. Exactly. And I I also suffer the kind of the same issue because most of the time if I'm telling a story, it usually starts with <laughs> Oh, when Alex and I were in Japan or oh when Alex and I did this and it's like, ah. Oh, uh, yeah. It's just we share we have so many like life things experience. that we have yeah. done together, so many life experiences that we always end up talking about each other. And I remember right at the start of our relationship, Dan is like, you talk about Sam too much. But now Dan's like, yeah, I mean. <laughs> Makes sense, because they were like, you, you did. <laughs> I did. Yeah. Is it a poly relationship? It's not. Joey doesn't share food. <laughs> <laughs> what is the most embarrassing thing Alex has ever done? <gasps> I know this one, I know this one, I know this one. We're not telling that story. <laughs> That's too far. But I know it. Demonetized. <laughs> Oh, it was such a good story. <laughs> it will never be posted on YouTube. We might talk about it if we go to a convention. Maybe. Yeah, if we go yeah. to VidCon, we can talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Who's a better boyfriend? Well, I don't, have, I don't have a boyfriend. I feel as if we should just like... <laughs> I have a fiance. <laughs> no, just a I think as a boyfriend, se like, depending what age... <laughs> <laughs> depending what age oh. you are, oh, you heart. have a different idea oh. of what makes a good boyfriend. Stop. So. I was promoted, therefore oh. I am the best boyfriend. Hold on, what did you I... proposed to Alex, you self-promoted. When I was younger, if I had been dating Sam versus dating Dan as a younger person, maybe if I had been like 16, 17, 18, I would have considered Sam a better boyfriend because Sam would like take me on dates all the time and like spend money all the time and never said no to anything ever. And he was just like, cause I, like I said before, he's a yes man. And he was always just like, yes, yes, yes. Like, yes, I'll do that. Yes, I'll buy that. Yes. But- So I was your sugar daddy. <laughs> That's all I was. <laughs> That's all I was! You know, like, as an adult with, like, a, a full-time job and responsibilities and stuff like that, I think having a partner like Dan works out better for me because I need someone in my life that helps me, to helps to give me some direction and, like, it, let's say if I'd still been dating Sam and I was making money on YouTube and I was just spending it on anything, Sam would be like, okay, well, I don't want to say no. Like, you can do whatever you want, sweetie, that's fine. Dan is the one that's like putting his foot down. Like, we're going to save that money. We're going to buy a house. Like, you got you got to save. you got to save hard. Dan's very, very responsible. Sam is a real people-pleasing person. Like, he just wants everyone to be happy. So I feel like at different stages in your life... You can life, easily pull the wool over my eyes. Yeah. Because I'll just be like, oh, yeah, I'll go with it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. As a, as a young person, Sam was the best boyfriend ever but as an adult Dan is going to be my husband and I'm very happy about that <laughs> how big of a bromance did the boys have I mean can you can you really put, put that into, into words, words? No. it's like just Montage. it's everything Montage. Yeah, we go to the gym together, we watch Netflix together, yep. we, we play Xbox together, we play D&D together. They do crafty things together? Yeah, we, we do crafts together, yeah. we blacksmith together. Yeah. With, uh, they're about we're, to together. We're making my wedding band. Yeah. Your what? <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, I, I mean, so I wasn't going to say it. I wasn't going to say it. No, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Mister, you are looking messy on camera. Messy me- What's one of your happiest memories? Hmm. Do you remember when we were in Niseko? Yes. Niseko. 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 Niseko? No! <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember in Niseko when we were next to our accommodation and there was the snowfield? Oh. And we were all playing together and like rolling down the hill and like jumping off the side of the building. That, yes. Oh my god. That was probably the most fun. I have pictures of that. Yeah. yeah. That is a great memory. I missed that. Can we, Thanks for sharing. Can we go back to Japan, guys? Yeah, let's go back to Japan. Let's do it. Oh. Um, tea. You want more tea? More tea! Spill the tea. You look like a goblin. <laughs> yes, master! Do they know they're like the cutest gay couple that isn't gay and isn't a couple? Yes. Was anyone salty about the living situation? The only person that was salty about the living situation was... Your ex. <laughs> and also, I mean, pretty, this, sal this one's pretty, pretty salty, salty about this screechy boy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. No, none of us were salty. We we're all very happy about it, but. <laughs> no, but aside from and that, I just wanted a place to I sleep. Think Archie, so much to ask. Archie about. was pretty salty because Archie isn't the biggest fan of Sam, and Sam doesn't Same. really yeah. like, like Archie. Likewise, he he screeches a lot. I'm pretty salty about that. Uh, it's, it's so rude. 
Yeah, let's put a feather on it. I think we can still say that the only person that was salty was your ex. Yeah, that there was a lot of salt. Uh, what is Sam going to do after we get married? What are you going to do? I mean, I'm not part of marriage, so like, yeah. <laughs> I guess I will live my life. Ha he'll live happily he'll live with near perfect, us. perfect hearing. <laughs> yep, perfect no hearing, no more screaming. Why does Archie hate Sam? Because it's, Sam's mean. No, Sam has is sorry, neutral. Sam has very good and sensitive hearing. Archie's yep. piercing screams just... Every time he screeches, I, I don't know how it feels for you guys, but for me, I hear the scream, but more than that, I feel this pressure build in my ears, and then I like I can feel it rumble through my head almost. It's so it's dramatic. Bizarre. So I give him the stank eye, and I think he takes that he as a Sam's personal attack. And Archie, come here! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! How did you break up with Sam? Well, that was an interesting day. <laughs> at the time. Sam and I, we were both studying, we were in university, and Sam was living with me uh, at my parents' house, and <laughs> sips the tea. The whole time that we were going through university, we were both baristas, we worked in cafes and stuff like that, and we actually worked together, and... So we're just laying danger upon danger, it's like dating your best friend, also working in the same cafe together. Living like, together, all of that, What yep. if you break up? Anyway, I knew for a while that I wanted to break up with Sam, but I was like, I, I can't, because if I break up with him, he'll never talk to me again, and I'll lose my best friend. Like, not only will I lose my boyfriend, I'll lose my best friend too, but... Which is a very scary situation. It's a, a really, lot, yeah. A lot of people get stuck in. Oh, that's true. Yeah. I know that there's a lot of people in those sort of situations, they're scared to break up with someone because they don't want to lose that person. Like, they've got to know their family and all of their friends, and they think, and maybe they've got a pet together, and maybe they've bought assets that's together. That's specific. <laughs> <laughs> At the time, Sam and I, we were living together, we had bought a TV and an Xbox and a $5,000 coffee machine and, and like, so we had some assets and we also ran a business when Sam and I were together, we ran a little business and we would make candles and a we- Very small scale, mind you. We sold them in stores and we sold them at markets and we sold them online, so we had a business with money tied up in the business and I was like, oh my god, like I can't break up with him, it's, it's gonna be so messy and so difficult. And I kind of like, I needed a sign from the universe, you know? I, I needed a sign. Just a little bit of a push. Just a push in the right direction. And we went to work one morning and I walked into the cafe and I walked into the kitchen to go and, you know, clean the coffee machine and get set up for the day. And there, on the kitchen counter, there was a bottle. I'd never seen this bottle in the cafe before, but it had a label on it. And it's right there in front of me as I walk through the door. It says, Breakup. The product was called Breakup. Obviously, I guess you spray it and it breaks up the grease. But I walked through those kitchen doors, stopped, and I just burst out crying. Followed <laughs> by me, and I was like, is everything okay? It's fine, Sam, it's fine. It's fine. It's <laughs> fine. And, yeah, you just, you didn't say anything that day. <laughs> but for the rest of the day, there was something off. There was something off, because Alex was the barista for that day, so she was making coffees. And since I was one of the wait staff, I was constantly like running coffees out. So every time I came up to collect a coffee, like, I try to have like small talk with Alex, or I'd, and she just did this. The whole day was just so morose and <laughs> despondent. So somber. And I was like, what's going on? I don't understand. But anyway. So we were living together, so. Hold on. Then then it's my half of the story from oh. my perspective. So the day ends, right? And we'd both driven there together. So we finish our shift, walk back to the car and get in the car. And I drive out of the car park and I'm just driving normally, trying to make small talk with Alex because I'm like, you know, nothing's... Well, something's off, I didn't really know what. And we're driving down the street and Alex just bursts into tears and I again say, Alex, what's wrong? And she's like, you know what's wrong! And I was just driving like, no, I bloody well do not. <laughs> I had no idea. Didn't see it coming. I had no idea. Yeah, I didn't Zero see it Zero to one hundred. I had no idea. <laughs> Like, I'm just driving, and Alice is bawling her eyes out, and she tells me I know what's wrong, and then in my mind I'm like just doing this mental check, like, have I done anything? <laughs> no, no, no. What have I said? Stop. What have I done? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately, I'm sorry. Oh, Immediately, I'm sorry. sorry. What have I done? And that's when Alex comes out, and, and, and she says, I, I think we need to break up. And so I was just driving, and I think I paused for maybe, what, one, two seconds, I was like, th th that's okay. Like, are you okay though? Like. What's wrong? What can I do for you? And Alex was just so taken aback I was like, by the wait, fact that I just accepted it. You're not mad? And I was like, no, of course not. Wait, so you're like, why would I be mad? Yeah, why would I be mad? You don't hate me? 
no. <laughs> <laughs> so then we spent the rest of the drive home because, like, then Alex just calmed straight down then because I was I thought he was going to be like pull you know slam yeah, on the brakes, the car, get out. over me, opens the car door, pushes the door open, pull get out, the ejector seat, <laughs> 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 boom. That was very unexpected because I was certain that he would just be like, I that's it, you know. I thought he'd be mad, yeah. but he wasn't. And we drove back to my house and we walked in the front door and my mom was like, Hi guys, welcome home. How was your day? And I just burst out crying and mom was like, <gasps> and Sam just walks in behind like, Hi. Yeah, it was a little bit awkward like just be like, yes, there's an issue here. I know about it. Don't worry. Sam went up to our room and I just sit down next to my mum and I'm bawling my eyes out. Mum's either thinking I'm pregnant or she's thinking Sam must have dumped me. And I said, Mum... <laughs> I broke up with Sam! And she's like, why are you crying? <laughs> I was so your mom, she's just like, what's wrong with you? I went upstairs and Sam and I just like sat down and I, I was just crying. I reckon I cried for like three hours and Sam's yeah. just like, it's okay. It's all right. It's fine. <laughs> More or less. And anyway, Sam ended up like staying, living in the house with me for. I mean, I had nowhere else to go, but that wasn't the only. Not to say like I only stayed I mean, there because of that, but like I was not in any hurry to kick him out. Yeah. Like I wasn't going to be like, okay, well, uh, I dumped your ass, so bye bye. Like mm. he, I, I was just like, like somewhat. Mm, let's not talk about that. <laughs> so yeah, anyway. Please don't do that to people. <laughs> So yeah. yeah, don't do, don't do that to people. If you, if you have a breakup and if, if it's a, a peaceful breakup, just just don't kick that person out on their ass and mm. leave them to fend for themselves. I was just like, look, you stay as long as you need to. Like this has been your home for the past two years or whatever it was. I'm not gonna oh, like, yeah, just make you leave. A while. So Sam just ended up sleeping on the couch and I was sleeping in my bed and we figured out we had assets. So we were like, how are we gonna divide this up? So we kind of looked at the value of everything and. We said, okay, well, rough 50 50 split. Like 50 50, I kept the TV and the Xbox, and Sam took the coffee machine. And then with the business, we kept all of the stock. We kept all of our candle, like jars, wicks, wax, everything, fragrance, all of that. And every now and then, we continue still, making candles. We still which, make candles. Which, yeah. which we should definitely do a DIY how to make that's candles. True. That's, that's true. That's fun. Yeah. Making candles is that's fun. That's very true, yeah. When mm -hmm. Sam and I were dating, these were the candles that we've made. These are very old. These are about six years old now. Yeah, this They're kind of like bit pulling, and pulling aged. away from the jar. But these are the two yeah. sizes. Okay. They're soy wax candles. Can you hold this one? We had like 50 different fragrances. They were double wicked. This is sandalwood. Oh, that's so good. Lemongrass, lemongrass. Ah, oh, lemongrass. What's that one? It's meant to be sandalwood. Yeah, that's sandalwood. Yeah. Oh, yep, sandalwood. Yeah, sandalwood. My favorite one was uh, passion fruit, and I also liked Ooh. the peach candle, and we also had like a musk candle and a vanilla, like a cookie. Not edible. Sugar cookie candle. <laughs> they smelt it. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so we still had lots of candles. I think we had a couple of hundred candles that we hadn't sold yet. So we just ended up selling them off and just splitting the profits and stuff like that. But it was all very peaceful. And uh, Sam ended up. Where did you go after? Oh, you went back home, didn't you? You went back to your yeah. parents, I think. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah, yeah. Back to, back to my parents' yeah. place and yeah, just business as usual. No, it was easy. And the thing is, like, a lot of people are like, how can you stay friends with your ex? Like, how? I don't understand. But something that I Easily. have... Easily. If, yeah. if nothing has been done that severely hurts the other person, if both people are just... If it's just like, we're moving on. If like, you're accepting the other people person's feelings. So, for example, the car ride could have gone very differently if I had of like taking the attitude of I don't care that Alex felt like she needed to break up with me why is she breaking up with me she should have stayed I yeah. could have gotten very bitter angry and resentful about it all but, but you're a good guy so you didn't but yeah and so both of us we respected each other's feelings and thought well if this is the best thing for both of us then it has to happen and yeah. just accepting that was what allowed us to move forward as friends and I kind of something that I have always really 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 firmly believed is that if you loved someone if you're in a relationship and you ever loved someone why would you just never talk again if you loved that person and you break up and all of a sudden you're like well sorry no nah, you never mattered to me i'm never going to talk to you again like it's not something that i have in me to just never talk to someone after a relationship ended i i cannot imagine doing that the moral of the story is if you're willing to stay friends you can do it yeah if you yeah. had if you were friends if you before Amicably the relationship, why would you not be friends after the relationship? Like, it's worth trying. Yeah, it's worth trying. Like, yeah. why not? How do the boys feel about your YouTube channel? Excited. Yeah, it's great. Like, it's when Alex <laughs> started becoming like successful on YouTube. I honestly have to say, I was yeah. like impressed. Like, Aww. and then like the negativity that would come with it. That's hard. 
Yeah. Yeah. Like, Getting like relentless and ruthless hate is pretty hard and Dan has to constantly drag me out of that. <laughs> because, you know, you can get 10,000 positive comments but then you get one negative and it'll ruin your day. Does Sam really have a girlfriend? Some people are saying he does and some are saying he doesn't. He do. He do. He do. She's lovely. We love her so much. It's her birthday coming up soon, isn't it? It is her birthday soon! Yeah, no, we, we get on with her so well. I wish she was here more often. She doesn't live with us, but I wouldn't mind if she did. She's great. Is Sam going to be the best man at your wedding? Sam- No! No. No, he will not. He Sam will not is uh, my maid of honour at our wedding. Because, you know, for a woman, you have a maid of honour, I guess, and your maid of honour is usually, what, your best friend. And there's no one I would rather have up there next to me than Sam. Yeah, it's a bit outdated these days. It's a bit outdated to just have a woman as your maid of honour. He can be like, although, my mate of honour. <laughs> although, I'll be honest, it's dawning on me that not only is this just like a position, I don't get to just come to the wedding and be on Alex's side of the procession and just stand there looking good. It's just, the I man. actually have responsibility. He has responsibility. I need to do. I need he has to, to help. You have to sign the paper. Sign yeah, the paper. You're gonna help uh, me organise things. Plan the hen's night, plan the... There's a lot to do. Yep. Great concern. Good luck with that! If Alex wasn't in your life, how would you see your life? I'll answer first, because like, honestly... You you can't, because like, if for me, if Alex wasn't in my life, I That'd don't know where back. I would be. Because yeah, go it goes back. so far back, it would completely change where I am, what I'm doing, who I'm with. I, you wouldn't have gone to the same university, because you I may to... not have even gone to university. Well, if you had gone to uni, you wouldn't have gone to that uni. Mm. Uh, you actually, you may have even joined the army, because you were talking about that for a I while. Know, and I talked you out of it. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's where I would have been. I would have been in the armed forces. So. Sam yeah. would have been in the armed forces. I probably would have gone to the mines. The mines. Oh, yes, yeah. that's true. That's the other thing. Like in Australia, like the high paying jobs, it's like mining. Like you go work in the mines. As an engineer, you could work in the yeah, mines. Mines or Abu Dhabi. Like hmm. that's it. There you go. And no birds for either of you, I guess. <laughs> no birds. Hmm. Who's the better cook? Me. Me. <laughs> me. <laughs> I mean, if I want it burned. <laughs> Excuse me, I don't <laughs> set off a fire alarm that much. True. <laughs> it only happens with the toast. No, but to be fair... Who can't cook toast? <laughs> if I'm not, you're not cooking toast, you're warming it. When Sam... Twice cooked bread. When Sam and I were dating, Sam was a great cook, but we lived at home and our parents would often buy the ingredients and we didn't have to spend money. So Sam was a great cook, but now that Sam lives out of home and he's trying to save his shekels, he is not spending money on anything and he doesn't cook anything anymore, ever. Migarang is amazing. He instant noodles. <laughs> So I would say probably Dan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you guys do the most cooking, I'll, I'll admit. I own the most cookbooks. And I reckon this can be the last question. Who is the better dancer? Queen Jelly Beanie would like you to have a dance off. <laughs> I feel objectified. <laughs> <laughs> I will not dance. You will not? <gasps> Why not? I cannot dance. Sorry. Archie's the best dancer. Here, take this. It's dangerous to go alone. <laughs> I'm as conflicted about this as you, Archie. <laughs> okay, wait, you've swapped. You can't swap. Go back to your positions. This is where I've always been. Yeah. Well guys, that's it. Thank you so much for all of your questions. I hope that we have cleared some things up for you. Hopefully. Uh, if you still have questions, you, you can leave them below. I, we can do a Q&A. Oh. If you guys have any other questions, just leave them down below. We could probably do another Q&A on Sam's channel. His channel is Suit Up Sam. You should go subscribe to him. Please do. Like, I, I need the followers because I don't have many. Dan um. doesn't have a channel, but leave a comment below if you think that he should. <laughs> yeah, leave a comment. And if he did have a channel, like, definitely what subscribe What would you want to see? Uh, Archie, come. Like, no, like... I suppose, like, for me, I aspire to be like the modern rogues. Like Sam and I the were The modern rogues! These oh I think they're really cool. Modern rogues are amazing, just FYI, in case you're wondering. Yeah. Well, with that, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye! Bye. Bye.